team, Mr. E. Mr. E is definitely one of those players that is capable of taking Xenos consistently, fighting for the top spot in NY. Um, you know, along with the buzz, but... Uh, you know, he's one of these players that I see so much potential in, and Utopian Ray is a t such a tough opponent, so it's going to be interesting to see how he tries to get around him. Well, he always puts a lot of pressure on himself, and he's been taking to studying his own play very seriously lately, and I feel like that has a lot to do with his very rapid growth. Because over the past couple of months, we've seen him sort of meander through uh, when it comes at least to local play, like at Xeno and at, uh, at Aeon. But like... As of late, he's just been popping, man. And I feel like it's because he's he's very self-aware of his own bad habits. About how sometimes he'll just swing and it's a poor choice. Or he'll put himself in really bad situations. And now, when you look at his play, you can see how evident it is that he's making much more active decisions to swing better, make smart, like put himself in better places along his stage, have a bit more of a streamlined game plan, so when things go awry, he can let his amazing instincts take the wheel. And we're already seeing that right at the beginning of this, the interaction that led to first blood being broken in E's favor, we saw him forward tilt onto Ray's shield, but he was spaced in a way where it, when Ray forward tilted out, he was still ready to just respond, just smack back. You're going to see lots of little interactions like that in E's play today, especially now that we're coming up to, like, the upper end of the bracket. That was... Yeah, man. Like, like you said, E is playing phenomenally. Utopian Ray actually not really finding a way to, to get around this. For, for a while, he had... He wasn't really taking any damage on that second stock, which is great. He was playing super defensively, but the thing is, he wasn't sealing the stock, right? So now he's at 117, and even if he does lose his stock, Lucina has no trouble killing. He doesn't. She, he does not have to worry about this because a back air, a forward air, like you know, the the nair, like all these all these options can just take it right now. Finding. He's trying. He's playing around Utopian Ray's usage of uh, his shield, and I think that's so important to do against a Palutena. Up tilt, great option to just take the stock. Not even gonna see any flash or anything. Like he's just he's just gonna flat out die. <laughs> good response at the ledge. Already racking up good bounce of damage. Like even in a really bad situation, he finally picking himself back up. And, you know. To, to Ray's credit, he's doing a good job of moving around. Here. He's forcing these interactions to occur, like, all over the place, from ledge to ledge. But most importantly, almost none of them have to do with the center of the base platform. If they're fighting on the stage itself, it's along the platform as they move towards the ledge. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really smart, active play from Utopian Ray, because he sees how devastating it is to fight E from center stage. You, so many of your options are narrowed down, and E's responses, especially at these climbing percentages, are just going to be fatal. Yeah, exactly. And But keep in mind, Utopian Ray is one of those players that does the best at the ledge. His favorite... That, that, must be, that must be his favorite part, because he does all of his damage on the ledge. He, he just nares you to oblivion, and then you just hold 60% straight at, like, on, on the right side or, or the left side. And, you know, at 120, 136%, Utopian Ray needs to find a way to just, like, you know, close this out. And I think he, I think he may, we may try and see, like, a drag down there or a spike coming from Utopian right here. He's going to have to do something bold if he wants mm -hmm. to end out this game one in his favor, because right now, E is made... Quite the grandstand coming into winner's semifinals. That was actually super smart. Knowing that up B comes out on... Uh, You'll never defeat me. It's, uh, I think it's a frame one move, right? Uh, it's invincible frame one, and the hitbox is active from the ground frame four? Yeah, but in the air, it's like it's just there, right? Yeah. And, um, you know, just immediately tapping his shield and mashing up B immediately. See, that's what I like about, like, E's more recent play. He's not just trying to dolphin slash his way out of troubles. Like, he's making sure that he recognizes what's going to happen after I land. Like, is this a safe reversal? Because <laughs> sometimes he'll just do it with. And as he's ready to land, someone's either charging a smash attack or preparing themselves for a big combo. 
And those are the situations E doesn't want to have to deal with. He doesn't want to l let loose any of the momentum that he garners. He, he wants to take this and run with it because Ray's also not a not a Palutena that you want to give him that you want to give momentum to. He is known for just making these crazy adaptations. And when he know, when he when he thinks I need to go off stage for this kill because I because I haven't gone off stage before, he's gonna do it. Up smash read. I mean, Up smash not gonna do it. Kind of held it for too long, and Mr. E does get punished for it. And now he's just struggling to get back on stage. I'm curious if the up smash was a missing cut or not, because I feel like... He held it, so I'm not really sure. Like, I think he was just like, ah, uh, he's going to just like, you know... Uh, yeah, he just sort of committed to it once it happened. Yeah, he was like, all right, <laughs> I've, made, I've made my bet. <laughs> Great back here. And we saw all that option coverage from the E. The down tilt, the, the, the fair, the nair to the fade back back here when he, when he saw that Utopian Ray just took a step forward. And that's one of the option coverages that I'm talking about that Mr. E's got so good at that. Look at that. Whoa. I like how E doesn't get greedy with these little hits he's getting on Ray. Like, the one-twos that he gets at the ledge. Just because he knows he's just checking Ray's movement in the air. Normally, we don't see Counter come out, but... What I was going to bring up is that, like, he knows that Ray can turn one of these situations into an unsavory trade, where once he's back at the ledge, He's threatening a lot of percentage, threatening the loss of stock. Like, Utopian Ray is not the type of player to sleep on. Oh! All right, we got it. And he got it, too. Oh! <laughs> but E actually just noticed, no noticing that uh, Ray already grabbed the ledge once and immediately just went down for that, went down for the spike. I respect the hell out of it. Yeah, man. Uh, these are the things that you have to go for. You want, if you see a chance to end your opponent's stock, do not go ahead. You take it. Now you're trying to take full control of the set. He's already got the stock lead. He's lapsed Ray in percentage. This is looking like E's game, but you know what? At this point, if you are Utopian Ray, what you want to do is kind of accept your loss, right? But here's the thing: it's a mental game. You're like you don't you don't bug yourself out about this game. You just think to, you just think stay alive so you can learn the mo like the, the more you can stay alive so you can get it, gather more data. Right. You know? Right. Just play this out. I am already down. I probably lost this match unless I make a huge comeback. But at this point, what can I do what can I do better for the next game? How can I make this comeback? It's also worth noting that like Utopian Ray is the kind of player who's gonna just lay down and die when the chips are down. Mm -hmm. Like he's still gonna play this out as though he could win it. No, yeah, because you can. Hey, look, if you're not dead, you're not dead, man. I've seen zero to death comebacks. Like it's certainly possible. Very grim chances, mind you. But now that the stock count is tied up, Ray's back in the game. Plus, like it's the best of five sets, so like. Uh huh. You still have, at minimum, one more game to learn what you can about your opponent and then figure out, well, maybe I'm going to switch to one of my other characters. I know he's been playing a bit of Joker lately. He keeps Omar deep in the pocket for when it's needed. Those could be possible uh, choices to go to if he's feeling like Palutena might not be up to snuff. Oh! Bro, I love when forward air kills, like, from, like, the center of the blade. Because it looks like it's not even, like, a real sword. It looks like a like a nerf toy. It's so just, I just imagine the bonk just went through you. Just went through you. Just bonk. Uh oh, man. All right, we're going back to Stadium 2. You think we're going to see a switch from uh, Utopian Ray? I don't think so, but it is something that should be considered. Yeah, I figured. Run okay. the hollow. Flat. Uh, what is it? Do or die? Ride or die? Yeah, there you go. Ride or die. I'm sorry. All right. Go! Now, I don't know so much about the run back to Stadium 2. I feel like a little bit more uh, room to play might have been better. Well, actually, I think it was a great stage for Palu, but, like, maybe Town would have been better? But maybe. Hindsight's 2020. We'll see how things uh, Something that out. gives uh, Palu, like, you know, a little more, definitely some more platforms to kind of just, like, Maneuver around Mr. E because he's doing he's doing a great job of just understanding how Palace and how Ray wants to move. And I say Ray because you know you can play a character, but you have your own movement. You know you have your own style, and that's something hugely important to note about these two players that they're they're fighting for their lives out here, man. 
Ray knows the situation that he's in, and this is something that may mentally be straining for him. I mean, it's definitely not an easy task. If he eats this 3-0 from E, he's going into quite the shark's pit of a uh, loser's bracket. Because Tilly and Frozen are waiting in the wings for their next oh opponents. My God. That is not somewhere you want to be right now. Yeah, they're also players who, you know, can't be slept on. Nonetheless, taking things back into the action here, and he's still sitting with a lead. I feel like he's just doing such a good job of, like, forcing the approach to, uh, to Palutena. And we were talking about this earlier into our block, but, like, the notion that when you're on top of Palutena, when you're smothering her, you're closing out a lot of her options. She doesn't have the greatest of, uh, of burst options to force people to get off of her. And while she can trade decently, and we've seen plenty of that from Ray, there's been so many situations where Lucina is just right in her face. And that's why E's been able to keep such a strong lead in the percentage game. And why more importantly, I feel like E hasn't really lost stage control at any point of the set thus far. No, he always seems to get it back. And the other thing is, is that he's playing at the right range. He's playing at, at the perfect space for Palo Tenen not to be able to get in and for her to whiff something, you know? A great, great tech read just to understand that Utopian Ray is actually just going to tech in. And that's something you... Ooh, look at that. The, the patience and actually covering that option with Dancing Blade. If he went for Shield Ray, like, he would have had it. That would have been sick. That, but that would have been the read of all reads. I, he used Dancing Blade because you can stop it if you see that it's starting to become unsafe. And then you can make it safe. Right, right. Staying at the perfect range once again and just forward tilting that... Oh my god, I love this from Mr. E. Okay, getting aggressive when he wants to. He can afford to. He has all the momentum in the world right now. Yeah, he is just running a train on, on Ray right now. <laughs> Back air from the platform. All right, you know, all right, so one thing I want to bring up about the way that Ray has been playing out this game three, and it's something I feel, find very uncharacteristic of Ray. He's been... He's been moving in really close without any, like, real game plan. Normally, we'll see dash attacks or, or roar back airs. Like, something to safely, like, approach with. But, like, we've seen a ton of Nair, which I feel is strange for Palutena. Especially so in this situation, but a really good forward smash read. Keeps right alive, but how much longer at 135 and counting? There's not much longer you can live against Lucina, especially being that all of her, pretty much all of her aerials killed. So, oh, that was sick. The Trump, which he hasn't done in God knows when, to, to just back air, and that's that's actually super important. They look kind of frustrated with that fist bump at the end, too. This is definitely, uh, he's got loser's bracket to bring it back, but that was not a content Utopian Ray. Nonetheless, no, that is know. Mr. E securing himself a spot for winner's finals where he will fight the winner of Jen and Suarez. Jen and That's Suarez. That's going to be a match that's fun to watch.